Time for Climate Justice is a campaign headed by the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. I spoke to him a few days ago and asked him how important he thinks it is that a proper agreement is secured in Copenhagen. I think it's extremely important and uh, we cannot afford to fail in Copenhagen. Uh, I believe that um, climate change is a, a real challenge and perhaps an all-encompassing threat that we face. It's a threat to our security, it's a threat to our health, it's a threat to food production and the very habitat, the coastal cities where millions uh, live, can be inundated with rising sea level and so we need to take it very, very seriously and the leaders have to deliver. As you know, there's still many people in many countries who are sceptical and say we're not sure that uh, man-made activity is resulting in climate change. What, what for you are the compelling pieces of evidence that we can already see? F let's start with the scientists. I think uh, major respected scientists have made the argument that climate change is happening. But over and beyond that, when we look at the, at the world today, I'm now working with the, the Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa and we see the impact of climate change. We've seen countries that were uh, uh, lands which were very far, fertile which are today no use either for grazing or for planting. We've seen what the serious droughts is doing to East Africa, the horn of the Africa. Today there are millions who will have to rely on international assistance to be fed. I mean, you, you reckon there are already billions of people who are migrants because of climate change? Absolutely. Uh, abs absolutely. And, and to some extent, uh, even the conflict la like Darfur has an aspect of it and the struggle over scarce resources. Uh, and it, it is happening. So who's got to pay the price, if you like, of, of sorting it out? I think the agreement in uh, Copenhagen, if it is a fair agreement and a binding agreement, universally accepted, should have as one of the pieces a fund to help the developing countries uh, uh, adapt, to reduce their risks and to help them grow their economies in a low carbon manner through transfer of green technologies. And uh, this is one of the pieces that I think the developing countries will be looking to. We have to accept that they have had very little to do with this problem. The 50 least developed countries around the world account for less than 2% of the greenhouse gas emissions. But they are the ones, and the poorest amongst them, who are paying the price today. It's not fair. There has to be climate justice. But the money, would that simply to be just, or would it actually be to affect the outcome, if you like. Well, it should be to outcome. It's, it, it, it's both. It, 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 it is morally correct, it's equitable, and it will affect the outcome. If you, uh, and I think if you don't have money on the table, it will be difficult to get an agreement. And are you confident now that the, the rich nations, the most developed nations, including the United States and Canada and Australia, where of course there's a big argument, are, are ready to make the sort of commitments, both in terms of curbs and cash that uh, you think are necessary? Yeah, I think we've made considerable progress. I think the EU has uh, committed. Uh, Japan, Norway has even gone beyond. And there's been a shift in the US. It may not be what one expected. There may be argument about its adequacy, but it's an important shift. And US is important to whatever agreement that we are likely to get because of its per capita emission and we need them to be on board. And I hope that they can build on the initial uh, proposal that the President uh, has put forward. Yes, there will be political problems uh, in, in Congress, but I hope they also realize that we are all in the same boat. You cannot fix the climate uh, uh, issue in one continent and not on the other. What about, you know, perhaps the most difficult area, the, the rapidly developing nations, China, India, Indonesia? I mean, they are, arguably, they can say we're being asked to give something up before we've even achieved it. Yeah, no, I think they, they will do their part. 
But what they would insist on is that the most drastic cuts must come from the developed nations because of the, of the, the historic and accumulated uh, uh, gases in there and their responsibility for it. But I think once that is done, they will, they will make moves to reduce their carbon intensity. Already China has come up with a, a proposals as to what it will do. Brazil has moved. I was in Brazil last week and President Lula was very pleased and proud with their proposal and their uh, support for forest, protection of forests and land use. And of course, I'm sure we'll go to uh, Copenhagen to challenge other leaders uh, to do the same. India is beginning to move, so I think there will be movement, but they would expect the major cuts to come from the developed countries. So what are, what are your benchmarks for this December? I mean, if what has to be agreed before you'd, you'd say it was uh, a meeting which was successful? I think a meaningful agreement should include acceptance by all of the 2% centigrade limit to ensure that we stabilize the, uh, the climate by 2050. It will mean the developed countries accepting targets for cuts along the lines as EU and others have made, including the US. It will require the big developing countries, India, China, Brazil, and others, to reduce their carbon intensity between now and 2020 with serious plans and thereafter uh, consider accepting uh, targets. Uh, the sh there should be agreement on forest and land use because if we are able to protect the forest and expand them, it will help us uh, with the problem. And of course, there has to be a fund to help the developing countries first to deal with their mitigation and adaptation and to be able to continue to grow but on a low carbon basis and to be able to have access to transfer and green technology so that they do not repeat the mistakes of the others. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. This is Sunday Live. Next up, Sunday Sport. Why?